what is the shape of the problem? And I thought, oh, that's a really interesting question to put to the teapot. What is the shape of this problem? I'm a contemporary jeweler and glass artist, craftsperson, artist and designer. Rather than being inspired by the natural world, I'm much more interested in the visual language of mechanics and machines and buildings and architecture. As a child, my father worked at BHP Steelworks, so really influenced by that aesthetic. The teapot was the second teapot in our family. So when it was just family having breakfast or morning tea, it would be the aluminium teapot with the um, really ugly tea cosy. Then the next grade of teapot was this teapot. So if you were family and came over, this was the teapot that came out. I spoke to Kate, who owns the teapot. She said she didn't want it repaired. And I, I said, oh, good, because you could pay somebody to repair it. So if you give me the teapot, it won't come back. There's a teapot, is that okay? And she said, yes. So that was a relief. Then I sliced the teapot up into all of these pieces. I didn't know when I sliced it up, it would just make it explode. And thankfully it, it didn't blow up. So I had to be brave and take a chance and just see what happened. And so I don't usually work like that. I usually have a plan. So it was quite liberating, yeah. It was really fun. <laughs> and I, it's an aspect of working that I would really like to build into my practice going forward. One of the parts that I cut out was the spout and I was looking at the shapes in the spout and I was like, oh, it's a tube that's got a curve and it, it has these two gold rings. One, it has a little bit of willow pattern that almost looks like an eye. And then I was thinking about tea and India and Sri Lanka and I just Maybe my eyes blurred a bit and I thought, I could make that into an elephant. <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. So it just seemed kind of magic. So then I thought, is it too kitsch? Is it too this? And I was like, I don't care. In my practice, I do try to be open to what, what is around me all the time. And you are kind of like a sponge and some things go in and they might come out 20 years later. You know, you're always this kind of filter where your things are going in the top of a funnel. And, and then they're condensing and swirling and the same things keep bringing you back. Sometimes I describe it almost like a striker hitting a bell and it just makes this really pure sound. And it's like, that's it. You only get to that point by keeping on going. You can't force it. You've just got to keep working and believe that it will happen. I would really love to see that look on Kate's face, that pleasure, you know, I think those little moments of pleasure that, that objects can give you are rare. So something that she had no idea what would come and she just trusted me to do something and then she'll see the finished piece. Yeah, that's, that would be a pretty special moment, yeah. <gasps> oh, what a clever, clever woman. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, <gasps> it reads like an elephant and a teapot. I'm in love, I'm absolutely in love. And when I look down, it's got little ears. It's something entirely new, but still incredibly familiar. What an amazing job. What an amazing work of art. Oh, I have an elephant in my family. Anyone who's familiar with my work, I think will be very surprised to see that I made that. But I've still got more making ahead of me. You know, so maybe it's what I'll be doing from now on. So in that way, it's been a really interesting project. Like it's really stimulated a way of thinking as a designer, what's the problem and, and what's, what are possible solutions? What's the solution I'm going to pick up today? What's the problem tomorrow? And I think that's why craftspeople are, they're the makers, but they're also the problem solvers. They're also the designers. So you kind of do everything. <laughs>